Welcome back uh, to our analysis of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's speech. In a moment, we'll play more excerpts from that speech. But let's get in how uh, social media is uh, looking at the speech. Gaurav Savant is uh, with us in our newsroom to give us how the world of Twitter and Facebook is looking at the speech. Gaurav, what's the sense? Uh, this is usually a constituency that strongly backs Narendra Modi at, more, at, the, at the worst of times. So how is Twitter looking at Modi's speech? Well, Twitter and Facebook both, Rajdeep, Politically, overall, on the speech, uh, you know, fair, fairly laudatory. Uh, of course, now, as you very rightly pointed out, this is a constituency which solidly backs the Prime Minister. But, you know, P. Chidambaram has countered him uh, on a couple of issues. For example, on the Jandhan Yojana, uh, while the Prime Minister spoke of 17 crore accounts uh, having been opened, uh, P. Chidambaram said the Prime Minister perhaps should also talk about the 24 crore accounts that were opened in the previous UPA regime. So, you know... Or politically, as far as the speech, is, uh, the speech is concerned, there is tremendous appreciation. Uh, there is also a fight back. But on the specific issue of one rank, one pension, Rajdeep, a lot of response, a lot of reaction and a lot of disappointment. Because the Prime Minister, while he reiterated uh, under the tricolor that one rank, one pension will be implemented, just the nitty gritty is being worked out. What is now being said by several veterans on Twitter is we knew all of this. We are very disappointed. Why no time frame for implementation? Especially when the Prime Minister spoke of uh, a very strong implementation uh, credentials of this government. Why that strong credentials? Why are those credentials not visible here? Uh, well, we have Brigadier Gurmeet Kamal who says it's a very sad day indeed uh, for non-implementation of one rank one pension. Uh, you have uh, Colonel Kharab who is saying that this should have been implemented. The date should have been announced. Veterans at Jantar Mantar are extremely disappointed. Some now threatening to take the one rank, one pension cause to the Bihar elections and challenging this government politically, Rajdeep. You know, there are those, of course, who are saying that the Prime Minister has uh, stayed, away, stayed away from the path of populism. That he might have been accused if he had used the ramparts of Red Fort for announcing OROP or giving it official in a sense, an official stamp of approval. You agree with that, Raj? That this was actually an, you know, in, in that sense, the Prime Minister didn't get carried away by the cacophony and, and decided that I am going to take my time, I am going to take a measured response. To that extent, it shows a maturity, an evolution of, uh, uh, of Narendra Modi. There was no grandstanding in his speech today. Let's give him credit for that. On there the Europe issue. On the Europe even, issue. Even on other, uh, but I would uh, yes. you see, on Europe, I on fully issues, agree. You, did, you see, the, did you think he was grandstanding at no, any stage? No, it wasn't. I, I think, Javed, then you made a point earlier about implementation. Now, I would have expected when he was doing this progress uh, report that he did for the nation, he should fix targets and say that, uh, you know, on Europe, I would have preferred a date and say, look, I'm going to sort this out by January 1st. So everyone sort of knows that that is happening. He talked of this new scheme that he's uh, giving the young startup and stand up India. You know, excellent uh, idea as he did before. This is probably, he talked of it in his last speech uh, in, on uh, last year when he talked of, uh, you know, uh, the young getting into entrepreneurship. And now he's come up with something interesting and wanting to do it. Again, I'd like to fix timelines on, on these things. But I would not be critical of him on the other issues with uh, regard to setting up the toilets and everything else let's not forget it's a herculean effort to do this and the fact on financial in inclusion terrific i mean i would give him full marks i wouldn't be quibbling whether he, this much money was not there certainly there is a movement on and when he talks about team india i think he means us also let's not forget it's not him alone it's not the government alone Team India means we need to start contributing a lot. We need to be appreciative of some of this movement. These are damn difficult things to do. You know, change in India is so, so difficult. So let's give him credit also. When he gives out his progress report, he has done quite a lot. There's a lot missing. We need to know that. You know, that, that's one way to look at it. The evolution of Narendra Modi from 2014 to 2015. 2014, you know, there was, he, there was an element of hope in everything that he said. It was almost as if he could walk on water. Now there is the reality that he has to face. You know, he has to deal with the finance ministry when it comes to OROP, their concerns about how much money can actually uh, be handed over through the budgets. Uh, even on, on financial inclusion at the end of the day, delivery systems in this country are not going to change overnight. Do you get a sense that the Prime Minister is realizing this and therefore is tempering expectations? Last year there were heightened expectations. He is now trying to temper expectations. Absolutely, without doubt. Last year was a Prime Minister inexperienced, more flamboyant, more given, 
now the you, the responsibility of the office responsibilities of the office are hitting home the prime minister having made the original mistake of you know not being able to resist the temptation of making this grand announcement at rewadi where that the first thing i will do is come and you know sign off for rop he now realizes there is a much tougher task at hand it's much easier said than done and therefore he is biding his time like raj said he he resisted the temptation he will wait heavens won't fall if it happens 6 months or 5 months later but he will go he will do due diligence and once the process is underway once everything has been settled he will probably announce it and if he does that he has my support do you, do you get that sense though in a larger sense not just oro that this is a prime minister who in 2014 everything that he said was about heightening expectations now it is about tempering expectations you see uh, last year was in a sense uh, poetry this year's prose as the old line goes uh, last year was a, a blue sky it was a blue sky moment he could say anything uh, uh, now clouds have appeared uh, the reality of delivery of the economic situation of the fiscal responsibility which oro for instance throws up is coming before, before him raj spoke about a deadline uh, now while in some cases like the startup scheme he has spoken about 1.25 bank branches giving a loan to at least one dalit or tribal uh, in the coming year but that's a, that's a minor sort of timeline or deadline i think there is an overall deadline which is 5 years he's he's conscious that he has a deadline till 2019 if there's not enough progress visible by 2019 he'll be voted out so he, i think he's working to that deadline because if you noticed uh, there were very few big picture announcements outside the ambit of what has already been discussed in the past year that's right toilets swachh bharat black money fertilizer one one uh, per per drop more crop all of this is stuff we've heard earlier and it's a work in progress so he's no, trying no. to sorry yeah. sorry he, I, he's <laughs> trying to tell people that look these are my plans they're not i can't announce new plans without yes but, these. but by doing 2020 or 20 or uh, whatever you'd like to 2019 that is a political statement he's saying elect me again i would uh, rajdeep actually focus on some of the misses he didn't talk i would have thought given the washout <coughs> in the government and everything else an appeal to the opposition last year he talked of this great coming point. together second he didn't talk about international affairs last year much of his speech dominated on how good relations with neighbors how he's getting along with the country he has traveled the length and breadth of this world in this one year why didn't he mention some of the things that he did yep. there are a lot of positives that were there then there is a very sensitive thing that's going to happen with pakistan he could have made some broad brush statement that actually cool down temperatures on some of these things though i know everyone saying war war but this is an occasion where you take the larger picture not just the next election you know that's that's well put the misses i think are important as much as the hits are at the moment uh, the failure perhaps to reach out to the opposition remember gst goods and services tax there's all this talk of a special session of parliament being brought in i didn't get any indication javed from anything that he said that he intends to call a special session in the next week i mean he could have made a reach out there he could have possibly said we need to come together on critical issues of the economy made an oblique reference at least to the need for the opposition and the government to work together do you believe that there is still that 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 failure if one may call it on the part of the prime minister to reach out to the opposition and realize that unless the opposition is on board you won't get critical legislation passed well while that may be true i'm not so um, i'm i'm not so sure if this is the occasion because the prime minister is addressing the nation he needs to be addressing of issues uh, you true. know that uh, that somebody says sitting in bihar or in punjab or in assam will relate to now whether gst passes or not the common man does still doesn't understand, understand. you he can still reach out to the opposition he can do it there are several other avenues mm -hmm. he, perhaps he he would have op been open to criticism if he had used this occasion to start right. talking of po of politics criticizing the opposition right. it so sort of just led to more bad blood so okay. i i wouldn't fault him But for not but javed one little sentence he talks of team india ad nauseum yes. one little sentence to say look the nation watched us Mm -hmm. As a political grouping, we must think some of their larger interests. Isn't that for the Maybe president yes. of India? You you heard the president of India's speech. President the, of the India president is. referred to it yesterday. He tried at both sides. The president. Yeah, was but but I think Raj, you make good points about the fact about Pakistan. There were certain issues that maybe were missing, but at the end of the day, Sudhinder Kulkarni. former bjp leader is making an interesting point he saying too much of self congratulation can be self defeating were there elements today where the prime minister was saying look i am doing so much uh give me more credit perhaps uh, referring to the negativism in the media almost uh, 
uh, and, and, and saying that the media won't give me credit, but you, the people of the country, should give me more credit. Talking directly, as Mr. Modi often does, to the people of the country. Welcome back. Uh, we're still digesting the Prime Minister's speech, trying to sort of uh, make some sense as to what is the big message that the Prime Minister is sending out through his speech here on Independence Day. Remember the big challenge for him politically, Parliament, which needs to legislate on critical issues. The big challenge of Pakistan, 23rd, there are, there are meetings between the two national security advisors. And of course, the other challenge that the Prime Minister will face uh, will come in the Bihar elections. Has he managed to successfully address all those three challenges? Just to get quick final political reaction, Brijesh Kalappa, there is a sense that the Congress party must reach out also to the government on GST. The government will reach out to you. If the government reaches out to you, are you ready, for example, to pass the goods and services tax in a special session if it's called in a week or 10 days from now? So, the, you know, you can be critical of the Prime Minister, but let's be clear, you will also need to work with this Prime Minister. Are you ready to work with Narendra Modi? No, we are willing to work with anybody, Rajdeep, so long as the country benefits. It's not a question of so one the country person benefits from person. goods and services tax. The country benefits from a goods and services tax. Start working with the Prime Minister on it. Yeah, I wish the BJP had realized that the country benefits from goods and services tax for the last 10 years because they blocked it for 10 years. I wish they had realized this and realized that realization had dawned upon them. So show you're earlier. not like the BJP. But so far as the Indian National Congress So why don't you show you're not like the we BJP? Don't the block it. The best way to prove that you are different is don't block it. The point is, the Prime Minister today seemed to be suggesting that <coughs> this is now about Team India. I come back to you. It, are you part of Team India or not? Is the Congress party part of the Prime Minister's Team India? No, no. We consider ourselves Team India, uh, Rajdeep. I don't know if the Prime Minister thinks of us as Team India or he thinks of us as uh, some other uh, uh, group right. or something. But we think of ourselves as Team India and that's essential, I think. But the, you so think of yourselves as concerned. You, you think of yourselves as Team India. I just want to get in Sunil Alag, who's joining me. Uh, he's been a BJP supporter. He's, of course, been uh, a top executive. Uh, Sunil Alag, was this a prime ministerial speech that you thought uh, was typical Narendra Modi, combative? Uh, aggressive, angry at times, and uh, also uh, problem solving. Or do you believe that this was not up to his normal, uh, st uh, normal style and substance? Was it a lot of sizzle and I very little steak, as someone is putting it? No, I, I think what has what has dawned on everybody is that for the last one year, all that we've heard is what the prime minister hasn't done. Not a single media channel, not anyone is talking about what the Prime Minister has done. So I think he took this opportunity of telling the nation, what has he done? Now it's up to us whether we want to digest it. He didn't make it into a political speech. He didn't have, leave any room for criticism that this is a speech because Bihar elections are coming up. X is coming up. He's criticizing the Congress for what they did in Parliament. He's kept it at a level which is much higher than just getting into the small elements on Independence Day because not only is India watching, the whole world is watching him. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he wanted to wash all the dirty linen. He's taken up the thing that, look, yes, many things need to be done, but look at what I've already done because nobody else seems to be talking about it. So mm -hmm. what's wrong with that? That's all I'm saying. And the first thing that the media went in in the morning was to discuss OROP. That was not the point of his entire speech. Look, I come from a family with everybody's in the army. Mm -hmm. My wife comes from, uh, from the Netaji's army. Her parents were and they were prisoners of war. I'm all for the army. But for the first 15 minutes, every single channel only discussed But that's Europe. because Sunil Alag, Sunil Alag, the fact is that the Prime Minister during his election campaign had promised Europe, had made certain commitments. Right. Now, he may not have set a target, but when you, when you raise expectations, then it, you know, uh, people expect those expectations to be fulfilled. So, it, it, at a time, it almost... And he, what did he say? He swears under the flag on Independence Day that OROP will be given. Mm -hmm. All right, now the question is that by the time next Independence Day comes along, mm -hmm. if he hasn't given it, you have every right to criticize. So mm -hmm. I think it's going to happen. He can't give a date. Mm -hmm. What people are not realizing, and I'm, I just want to say it, not got to do with the Prime Minister or anybody, mm -hmm. the financial 
liabilities that are going to come from ORAP is yeah. not a one-off. If no, it was I, a one-off as on point. today's date, I think you would have announced it. No, no. Let, let, it's I, a perpetual liability your, on the let, nation. Let, 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 yeah, quick response, uh, uh, Raj. You know, I talked to Mrs. Yes. I would consider the ORAP a dodge. A dodge. A dodge. You know, he, he yeah. dodged the, this thing. There are several other dodges that he did this time. Corruption. He sort of focused on petty it, corruption, right? But when it came to the issues of, you know, uh, we saw the Vyapam scan and all that, he's completely quiet. Then you take a look at Make in India, smart cities. These were issues he dodged. He start out, uh, went off with Startup India, mm -hmm. you know? So there were a lot of dodges apart from the misses that he was there. How did he which, dodge Orop when he said he's committed to it? He didn't dodge it. He, he said he's committed to it last year as well. The point that is being made and we'll right. come, so, now, just a minute, my, my views on Orop is I think the Prime Minister actually exercised due diligence. The Prime Minister, rather than a dodge, I would say the Prime Minister was careful and cautious. Now, some would say that that's not that's a right. that's not a dodge. that's not I a classic with the word dodge. Okay, okay. Let, let, let's let's take a break. Whether it's a dodge or whether it's due diligence, is we can argue. We can argue till eternity. The larger point is the prime minister is always expected, or Narendra Modi seemed to be a T20 batsman. So when a T20 batsman decides to play a bit like a test player, and I thought his speech today was more like a test player, then we get worried. And we thought that test player playing was actually the highest form of cricket. So, let's <laughs> leave it at that. We'll come back with more. Is Narendra Modi ever going to return to his T20 form? We'll ask that to our panelists.